Now it's time for the day's news and sport on BBC Two with Moira Stewart and Helen Rollison. Civil Liberties groups have criticised the Home Secretary's plan to help employers check on job applicants' criminal records. Michael Howard wants a new agency to make the checks. The INLA terrorist group has said it shot a man dead in a Belfast restaurant this afternoon. And a commanding innings from Graham Thorpe leads England to victory in the second one-day international. Good evening. Civil liberties groups have expressed concern at the government's plans to supply employers with details of job applicants' criminal convictions. The pressure group Liberty says people shouldn't have to disclose convictions that aren't relevant to their work. The Shadow Home Secretary Jack Straw warned that people wouldn't be protected from rogue employers. People working with children are already liable to be checked against criminal records. Education and social services departments are entitled to the information on those wanting to take up sensitive posts. The Home Secretary wants more employers to have access to records on the police database. All employers could ask applicants to produce a certificate detailing recent or serious convictions. But national lottery ticket sellers, for example, would be subject to stringent checks, along with professionals like dentists, lawyers and accountants. Any of their convictions or cautions, however long ago or minor, could be revealed to potential employers. There's a real risk that this could lead to many ex-offenders being denied jobs, although their convictions have no relevance to the post for which they're applying. If that happens, it will not only be unjust to the individual, it would also put society more at risk because offenders who haven't got a job are much more likely to re-offend than those in employment. Labour approves of the proposals as long as there are safeguards to protect civil liberties, but says the government's plans don't go far enough. There's overwhelming evidence that there are a number of firms in the private security industry run by serious crooks. And what Mr Howard's proposals will mean is that these crooked employers will be able to get hold of the criminal records of their employees, but the crooked bosses will go unregulated. The plans will form part of another assault on crime by the Home Secretary, with a rash of new measures expected. With the general election in mind, he's making a concerted effort to regain the initiative from Labour, whose own policy statements on crime are increasingly tough. Jane Peel, BBC News at the Home Office. The Irish Republican terrorist organisation, the INLA, says it shot a man dead in a pizza restaurant in Belfast this afternoon. A gunman walked into the restaurant and fired at close range before escaping in a waiting car. The restaurant was packed with families attending children's birthday parties. The gunman walked into the Chicago Pizza Pie restaurant in the centre of Belfast and shot his victim once in the head and twice in the side. The attacker ran outside and made off in a waiting car. A charity abseiling event was taking place close by and an ambulance man on duty at the event went to try and help the victim. And when the barmen went down there almost and said that somebody had been shot and I proceeded up to it with our medical equipment and uh, this gentleman was lying on the floor with a pedal of blood around the place and after careful examination discovered he was shot through the head. Customers, including children, were ushered out of the restaurant, many of them in a distraught state. The Republican terror group, the INLA, admitted carrying out the shooting and identified their victim. This murder appears to be the latest incident linked to a bloody feud involving factions within the INLA. That feud began in February and before today it had already claimed three lives, including that of a nine-year-old girl. Mark Devonport, BBC News, Belfast. A man who was being questioned by Kent Police, hunting the killer of Stephen Cameron, has been eliminated from the inquiry. Stephen Cameron was stabbed to death at the junction of the M20 and the M25 last Sunday in a so-called road rage attack. The man had been arrested last night at Worthing in Sussex in connection with the possible theft of a Land Rover Discovery, a vehicle similar to the one used by the attacker. A 13-year-old schoolboy with joint British and Nigerian nationality has again been released from custody at a security base in Lagos. But British diplomats say he'll return for further questioning next Tuesday. 
John Paul Mokuolu was, was freed on Thursday after a month in detention, but he was called back for questioning yesterday. John Paul's MP, Glenda Jackson, claims he's been traumatised by beatings during his detention. Two more British children have developed meningitis while on holiday in Mallorca. One child is critically ill in hospital in Parma. Earlier this week, two young holidaymakers died from the disease. But the Department of Health says there's no reason for people travelling to Mallorca to change their holiday plans. There are 27 flights today just between Gatwick and Mallorca, and although most holidaymakers are concerned, they're not panicking. The five-year-old girl who's the latest victim is in a stable condition in hospital in Palma. Her tour company's issuing leaflets, explaining that meningitis isn't transmitted through most holiday activities. The advice we've received from medical experts in the UK and in Palma is that people should carry on with their holiday as normal. There's no more risk of catching meningitis in Mallorca than there is in the UK, and people should proceed and, proceed and, and enjoy their holiday. A few people have returned from holiday early or moved hotel. Others in close contact with the four victims have been given antibiotics. Most of those returning today are stoical. We were obviously at the other end of the island, so not quite as concerned as other people, and continue to enjoy our holiday, but we're just sensible about taking precautions, really. Meningitis is obviously the biggest scare any parent would have, so yep. you know, I'm still very worried about it. Yep. Tour companies point out that despite the scare in Mallorca, there are 50 cases a week in Britain. Wesley Kerr, BBC News, Gatwick. 28 passengers were hurt when their train was derailed by a mechanical digger near Leeds. The accident happened close to New Pudsey Station when the digger rolled onto the track from a builder's yard. The injured were taken to hospital in Leeds, but no one was seriously hurt. The train, which was travelling between Scarborough and Blackpool, dragged the digger more than 20 yards down the line. Its driver managed to jump clear before the train struck. Twelve men suspected of being football hooligans have appeared before magistrates in Newcastle charged with conspiracy to commit violence. They were arrested in dawn raids yesterday following an investigation into violence after Newcastle United lost the Premiership title three weeks ago. Nine of the men were given bail on condition they stay away from Newcastle City Centre and any Euro 96 venue. Now the rest of the sport and with the details, Helen Rollison. England's cricketers have beaten India in a low-scoring but gripping Texaco Trophy International at Headingley. Although they eventually won the second game in the three-match series by six wickets, they had to be rescued from a crisis by Graham Thorpe. Having put India into bat, England dismissed them for only 158 on a difficult pitch, but in reply they lost three vital early wickets before Thorpe's unbeaten 79 guided them to victory. With their confidence already resurgent after events at the Oval, England hardly needed the early gift of the prize wicket of Tendulkar run out in schoolboy fashion. It set the tone for a highly competent English performance in the field, with just about every chance being adroitly accepted. It seemed England's World Cup fumbles had been eradicated by Bumble, the nickname in which England's new coach glories. Mohamed Azaruddin strove to get his team going, but could never really break loose. And when he departed to a steepling catch by Brown, the innings faded tamely. But England, as only they can, immediately made 158 look like an imposing target. Hicks' first ball dismissal, leaving them on two for two. And it could have been worse. Thorpe's edge chance amazingly attracting no interest from either wicketkeeper or fielder. It was a decisive error. Thorpe, unperturbed by the subsequent loss of his captain, took England through the crisis and went on to compile a match-winning half-century, combining stiff resolve and impeccable judgment. In company with Alex Stewart, he eventually saw England to what in the end was a comfortable win, and one from which he and the whole team can draw much satisfaction. Kevin Geary, BBC News. And there'll be full highlights of the cricket at five past eight on BBC Two. Bath from Rugby Union have gained revenge against Wigan from Rugby League in the return leg of their cross-code challenge matches. Playing at Twickenham under union rules, Bath beat Wigan by 44 points to 19. Wigan, winners of the Middlesex Sevens at Twickenham, found the darker arts of the 15-man game much harder to master. Bath's scrummaging power won them a penalty try early on, but then showed that the best of Union's back play is equal to anything in league. John Sleitholm brushing aside Jason Robinson's tackle to outpace the Wigan defence and put Bath 20-0 ahead. Wigan's problem was getting possession. The line-out was clearly foreign territory but it was the straightforward skills of pace and strength which enabled Mike Catt to go over for Bath's fifth try without reply early in the second half. 
but running and handling is a game that Wigan are also familiar with. From behind their own goal line, they ran it back at Bath. Martin O'Fire finding support from Murdoch for a move the length of the field and Wigan's first try. Two minutes from the end, Wigan did it again. Jason Robinson making the decisive break to give Murdoch a second try and prove that these are both fine rugby teams who are much better at their own games. Neil Bennett, BBC News. Football in Plymouth Argyle are promoted to the second division after beating Darlington 1-0 in the third division playoff final at Wembley. Ronnie Morge scored the vital goal. It was Plymouth's first visit to Wembley in their 110-year history. They enjoyed the majority of support in a crowd of more than 43,000, a record for a third division playoff. Nick Faldo is the joint leader of the Volvo PGA Golf Championship after the second round of play at Wentworth. He's tied at eight under par with Italy's Costantino Rocca and Mark McNulty of Zimbabwe. Even Faldo needs a slice of luck occasionally and his came today on the 17th when his second shot hit a tree and landed conveniently on a spectator's shopping bag. An official ruled that Faldo should be entitled to a free drop and he went on to birdie that hole and the 18th for a round of 69. Earlier, Bernard Langer's remarkable record of making the cut in every event on the European Tour for five years came to an end. The Germans' three over par 74 today meant he was eliminated for the first time in 68 successive tournaments. Willie Carson on Mattia has won the Irish 1,000 guineas at the Curra. His victory comes a week after he was in trouble for a mistake at Lingfield and today he received another ban for five days, this time for wearing the wrong type of jockey's cap. With the derby just a fortnight away, the 53-year-old had hinted that he would retire, but there were no doubts about his confidence on Mattia. The filly, trained by Ben Hambury, took up the running three furlongs from home for an easy win. And Colin Jackson, Linford Christie, Tessa Sanderson, Diane Madal and John Ridgen all had victories at the Welsh Games this afternoon. Moira. In tonight's main news again, civil liberties groups have criticised the Home Secretary's plan to help employers check on job applicants' criminal records. Mr Howard wants a new agency to operate the checks. And the INLA terrorist group has said it shot a man dead in a Belfast restaurant this afternoon. That's it from us. The news and sport on BBC One is at five to nine. <laughs> A very good evening to you. It's not been a bad day today, but I think uh, more unsettled through tomorrow. Now, the showers are dying out as we speak, but more rain will be pushing its way in from the Atlantic. But it's not going to be a cold night. Lowest temperatures in the north around about 3 degrees or so. We're going to find early tomorrow morning the rain getting into the western side of Northern Ireland, starting to push its way in towards Cornwall. But I think most places are starting off uh, dry and uh, fairly bright. The best of the sunshine over in eastern parts of England, eastern parts of Scotland. But then the cloud pushing across most places uh, during the morning, the rain following it too into western areas, and then the rain pushing across to the east, getting across to most places apart from the far north of Scotland, I think uh, during tomorrow afternoon. Now the heaviest of the rain is likely over northern England, the lowlands of Scotland, across into uh, northern Ireland. It's going to be rather more patchy, I think, down in the south. In fact, there could be a drier, brighter interlude pushing across there for a time in the afternoon before more rain comes back through in the evening. Top temperature tomorrow, well, that's likely to be in East Anglia, getting up to about 16 Celsius or 61 Fahrenheit. And then on Monday morning, well, a lot of cloud around apart from the far north of Scotland with some rain. The rain tending to ease down through the day, but becoming very windy in the south. That's it. Bye for now. Regent's Park Penguin Pool. Of all his buildings, this was my father's acknowledged favourite. But the man who invented it also worked hard at inventing himself. He was a man who hid a dark secret. The only thing I knew with any certainty was that his name was not, in fact, Bertolt Lubetkin. Now his daughter uncovers his hidden past, the lives of Bertolt Lubetkin, in the works, Tuesday at 8 on BBC Two. A good family. The man in the supermarket says he heard that it's the hottest summer since 1900. With bad memories. You tell them, and they'll come and put Tom into care. She's at peace now. Entangled in a moral maze. Just you and me. That's all the family we need. From Ian McEwan's provocative novel, Screen 2 presents tonight's film premiere, The Cement Garden, 945. 
on BBC Two. Now, correspondent on BBC Two takes us to the opposite ends of the earth for this week's reports. BBC. Reporting from Beijing. Reporting from Delhi. Jerusalem, Pretoria. Reporting from New York. Reporting for the BBC. Good evening from Boston. A 